Today we're going to be meeting Tanya O'Brien and she's the Director of Data and Information Management in the Department of Industry, Environment and Planning. Tanya's been leading a very important project in preparing the industry for the next stage of rebuilding confidence in New South Wales. She and her team have been responsible for building the e-planning platform. Tanya, would you like to share some of the insights that you have into the work you've been doing? Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity to come and talk about e-planning. We have over the last um, couple of years been transitioning the application process, the, the planning process, into a digital environment. So um, for too long the planning world has been all about paper, it's been about how do you apply for a piece of um, development, you have to go into the council, you have to develop a series of documentation um, and it has been a very analogue process for that piece of paper to make its way through the approval process. Um, we actually considered how to make this easier for everyone and part of that process we went through a, a an end-to-end -end process with our uh, customer journey mapping and we found that a piece of paper that theoretically is printed at by the applicant then goes through all of the different pathways of the council, um, you know, records department, the customer service department, um, the planning department, all of the referral bodies, that same piece of paper can change hands over a hundred times. Which means that it's a very analogue and it's a very procedural base. Nothing can be done concurrently. So in doing and in designing what um, our e-planning solution is all about, it's about trying to take advantage of digital environments um, to mean that we can transition that to make it faster, to make it every, accessible for everybody um, and, and go into a, a digital world. Um, one of the key outcomes that we're also trying to get into is the ability for the New South Wales planning system to have a single set of truth, effectively a single source of truth, which means that we will have data from the, um, from the application part of the world all the way through from the very first application that the applicant makes. Through the assessment process, we'll be able to see um, how, what gets approved and how that has changed. It might be that it started as a 12-storey building and comes back to an eight-storey building. Um, we'll be able to see once that approval is, is received, it turn into a construction certificate. We'll be able to see it turn into an occupation certificate. And all of the key data elements are, are captured within our e-planning and our New South Wales planning database. So when we're talking about the New South Wales planning database, it is a single source of truth um, for all of our planning information across, um, across what is going to be built in New South Wales. And having that kind of database means that we can project uh, into the future. We can start to see what is in the development pipeline, that we can see these types of developments are happening in these areas. And that makes us better in terms of our decision making for um, infrastructure, for policy, those kind of things. So it's a really powerful piece of information, really powerful database that we're building. Um, and the, the, the beauty of this is that it is being rolled out across New South Wales. Um, to start with, yes, we are focusing on, on the greater metropolitan areas um, and the eastern seaboard, those, those higher density. population areas and higher density and, and of, of development that's happening. Um, and we are focusing on those, those higher density areas. Into the future, we'd like to, and we will be, rolling this out across New South Wales. That means that um, we can get this level of confidence and surety across New South Wales. So Tanya, that consistency across the state is really going to cre create a lot of consistency for developers and planners and also builders to actually deal with a really common platform of data management. It should really be lowering the cost of doing business in New South Wales, shouldn't it? It should mean that a developer who is able to do a development in one LGA knows exactly what to expect when they go and do a development in another LGA because they'll be confronted with or presented with exactly the same sets of data requirements um, in the same platform in the same environment. The beauty of it also is that at any time they'll be able to go onto their, onto their website or their, their laptop or whatever and have a look at the, all of the um, applications that they've got running or the jobs that they've got running at that point and at the touch of a button be able to see where it's up to. So this is clearly the opposite of red tape, isn't it? <laughs> it is the opposite of red tape. It's, it's all about trying to streamline it, make it easy for everyone. Um, and, and 
get it get us all to a place that we can actually use and extrapolate on that information which is just so important for making New South Wales the best it can be. Tanya, as we've worked through this over the last six months, because it's only, I've only been around for that amount of time, but uh, what I've noticed now is that there's a real commitment to work across agencies as well as just simply work within your agency. Do you want to just talk about some of the excitement that we're finding in that space? Yeah, absolutely. Um, our environment is, uh, well, our, our work is very much done in a um, consultative way. We try very hard to make sure that what we deliver is going to add benefit for everyone that's going to be an end user. So we spend a lot of time um, talking to people about what they need and how they, how they would need um, to work and improve the way that they work. And what we've found through this process is that there is such a huge appetite for making things better. Um, no one wants to keep doing it the way that we are. Everyone wants to be supported by a system that will make it more flexible, more easy, etc. The system we're going to deliver will um, introduce a much greater level of standardisation and predictability for everyone, like you were saying earlier. It makes it more efficient and more cost effective for everyone. Um, the system's also picking up on that 24-7 nature of, and flexibility that we're all looking for in our workplace now. Um, that means that people are able to extend their work days, are able to be much more flexible and are able to have a full-time view of what is the most important thing in their life often, um, which is that development application that they've got going through the system. Um, and that, that piece of overview, the ability for someone, instead of having to pick up the phone and call the council or call the, um, the certifier and wait for a response, um, it means that they've got that instant level of understanding of, of what's going on and what's holding up an application in, in, if it is being held up. The uh, timing's pretty amazing when you think about it because we're just coming out of a post-COVID lockdown period and it's yep. never been more important to accelerate new projects into the marketplace. And of course, now we have a new way of working. Potentially, 40% of people will spend most of their time out of the office going forward. This is just going to sing at the right time, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. In into the future, we will not need to be, you know, getting into the car and going to the front counter of a council or a, a building or physically moving ourselves anywhere. We will be able to um, completely work from our home, our own home office, or uh, remotely as much as we need to. Um, this kind of technology is is really enabling us to um, be much more efficient. So look, as the, as the regulator, Tanya, I've got to say that uh, I'm really excited about the intersections that we've been able to build into the e-planning flows, the workflows, that's going to make us a, a very efficient, very effective regulator. How, how's that interaction struck you and your team? Um, it, the interaction between our teams together has been uh, to date amazing. We um, came on board and got a very quick and clear understanding exactly of what it was that um, the, the job and how important the job is that you guys have in front of you. The task of um, improving the building quality and the, um, the, con the confidence, the, the consumer confidence in our industry is, is an amazing thing that our team is really very passionate about. Um, we, we see so many opportunities yeah. in, in what we're delivering and, and the, the ideas that come out of this collaboration mean that we can all c get together, that we can all um, challenge each other and, and strive for something better. Um, we've been talking through our Pillar 6 uh, working groups and, uh, sorry, our six Pillar working groups and, and various different stakeholder engagements about the many opportunities there are to improve our building industry. And every single time a digital program comes up as something that's going to enable people to work better, to work faster, to work more efficiently. Um, and, and people really do want this. They, they want the additional oversight that comes with a program like this, but they also want the additional quality. And because of the, the way that um, our our system will hold people to account. There's going to be definite checks and balances in there that mean that auditing purposes, it's going to be much easier than in the, uh, the old days. Very powerful. When it was ba based on paper. Yeah. yeah. So um, as we start to um, stand up the Design and Building Practitioners Bill, <clears throat> you're already in front of that as well because the, the lodgement of declared designs and then ultimately the lodgement of declared as-built drawings 
this is just a, a, a bookend data grab that will just make these things so fit together. So how has that progressed in your thinking in the last few months? Yeah, um, we have very much been guided by the bill as it's been developed. We are all about trying to make sure that those key aspects, those um, design practitioners are brought in and that we can validate in our system the right people are doing the, the, those validations and that we can validate that um, they are accredited appropriately and that we have a record of who's made those decisions or key decisions in a building. Um, from into the future, we want to be able to look back and sort of say, we have a very strong understanding of how that building came to be from all the way from its approval process through to its construction, the engineering that's involved through to the, you know, the, the builder and how it was actually built and, and those as built diagrams that will be sent back into the system and captured. So that means that we've got that complete record and it means that we can hand that over to the future occupants of that building to allow them to have a complete understanding of, of the maintenance regu regulations and that they're going to be facing moving into that building um, and also you know how, how, how it needs to be operated. Um, it's, it's a really exciting time to think of the amount of data that we are going to be able to share um, with the community, the people who are going to live there and own it and maintain it, um, and even um, you know our, our first party responders if something were to go wrong in the future. It's, a, it's an amazing resource. So it's been an interesting um, innovation period too because out of this collaboration we've actually pushed ourselves to discover some innovations. Um, it'll be, for example, almost, well, it will be totally impossible for a designer to actually upload documents without then going out to the government licensing system, proving who they are, identify themselves and then upload the documents. It's, the traceability is going to be amazing. And we're going to see not only digital twins applying to buildings, we're now going to see digital twinning applying to the players. And for the first time, the players are all going to be able to be seen in motion. It's very exciting. You might just talk to the fantastic innovation just around the title blocks that we're looking at sure. for these drawings. Yeah, so um, as part of the audit tool and as part of that process that we're looking at, um, as a, a design gets uploaded, we've got the initial design. So as part of that, we will have the issued for construction diagrams. Um, and when the builder decides that they are ready to seek an occupation certificate, they will be issuing us again with a set of diagrams that says the, they are the as constructed diagrams. And we're looking at uh, a piece of technology that will be able to overlay these two sets, uh, which means that we will be very quickly able to highlight the difference between those two. We'll be able to see anywhere that um, some, someone has modified perhaps a, a, a building, a window or something, um, and, and, and that will be highlighted through an AI um, uh, a piece of technology that will highlight that to the, the auditors. Um, it means that our auditors are going to be much more efficient and it also means that we will be able to have a very clear understanding of um, what's being built um, and, and you know the people who are building these things, our, our builders are going to be, they know that they're being held to account. They know that um, their standard, their quality um, and their record keeping needs to be a one in order for us to actually, you know, comply. Well, we heard this week, in fact, that uh, AI, another way to describe it, was digital workers. And we actually saw a demonstration of uh, the comparison of those uh, two document sets, the declared designs and the declared as built. And I think we saw a batch of about 200 go through. go through, and I think it was less than nine seconds to simply compare about 200 drawings. So. Yeah. It the power of the power of the regulator and the power of the audits process has just really never been like this before, has it? No, that's right. It is an efficient program that um, will cut down all of the hack work and all of the ability for someone to sneak through something that um, you know is you know a slight change. No one will notice. It'll be all right. All of a sudden, that all of that stuff will be able to be automatically picked up, um, and it means that, like I said, you know the building industry will be held to account. They will be. The efficiencies that you're uh, bringing forward are also a great story for the taxpayers because um, really we're, we're taking out of the cost of doing business a huge amount of cost to the players, but we're also taking out a huge amount of cost to just simply provide the public governance. 
So it's a very exciting period for me from my point of view as the uh, building commissioner. Well, let me tell the consumers and the industry of New South Wales that we'll have all this stood up by the end of next year. And at that point in time, New South Wales will lead Australia in this capability and this level of service to consumers and the industry. Tanya, thank you for coming in and thank you for being such a great member of the team. Thank you, David.